We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, no, you know, my dear, what's going on? I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, Facebook, Threads, you name it, we're on it. Just type in Boss Talk Podcast 101 on any platform. I mean, Google, Apple, you name it, podcast, streaming platform. But if you want to see our visuals, just hop on over to our YouTube channel and sign up for our membership, hit join. See that link under any of our videos. Click that, takes you straight to our join page. Join that, we appreciate your support. And you will see all our full length interviews way before he started chopping and clipping it up. All right, thank you. Man, listen man, we got a special guest today, y'all. He don't need no introduction, he in the building, y'all. This guy right here, man, came with some hell of a hits, man. Uh, uh, some that basically, y'all gonna know the voice, we got a lot to unpack today, man. Wide frame is in the building. Whoa. What's happening? What's happening? Hey, man. What's, what's going man? on, man? Hey, hey man. man. We so happy to have you, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Hey, man. It's a pleasure. So man, good. that boy got that voice too. I, know. I ain't heard that, that sound since voice. Big X the Plug was on here. <laughs> Y'all got that Big X the Plug voice right there. No, but Where's you it? like the deep voice with the rapping. I, when I hear the deep voice, I want you to sing. Oh, That's we gonna what I want. Yeah, he gonna give I us a little singing too today. Yeah, 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 we gonna I get like him on that, that too. He Thanks, sings right. and everything. Mm. But we gonna get him. But but I wanna get into it just a little bit, bro. Before yes. Mr. Maker, um, you from Arkansas? I am. Little Rock, Hot Spring. Hot Springs, Hot okay, Springs. okay. Spot City ripping, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> one, right? Man. Okay, so when I think about Arkansas, because, okay, you know, I'm from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And in Jamaica, you know, yeah, we have waters that they say when you go in and it touches your skin, it can mineral bath. I mean, it, it's just good for your body. Mm -hmm. But when I came here and I hear about, when people talk about Arkansas, they talk about Hot Springs. Mm -hmm. Do y'all really have that water that is good for you? Yeah, what you <laughs> talking about? Like, what does it do? What does it do for we you? We got that. We got the natural spring water. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a hot. It's a hot spring. Like, it's, if I touch it, it's, it's gonna burn me hot. Almost. Almost. Yeah. Have you been you in there? Yeah, you can literally touch it, but it, it is hot, like hot water at, at your house when mm -hmm. it come out. Yeah, it's that hot, but coming just straight out the ground. Is wow. it hot even in the wintertime? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, it could be freezing outside, but that part, wherever that water is coming down, is boiling. Like, mm. What does wow, it come from? Crazy. I don't know. Oh. Uh, I think that I think that's a, like a volcano that is sitting there. Really? Yeah, that's what they told me ever since I grew up. That's oh, heavy. Okay. Yeah, that, that is sitting down in a volcano. So y'all got volcanoes down there? That's what they tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get so, to it. Yeah. You were raised with your mom and dad? I was. Both, with, with both in the same my, household? My stepfather. I, okay. I got a, a excellent stepfather. And uh, where's your? I still, I'm still, I still talk to my dad, but I was raised with my stepfather. So you knew your biological father oh, yeah, growing yeah, up? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I talked okay. to him the other day. Okay. <laughs> so how old were you when your stepdad came in the picture? About 13. Okay, so yeah. you were older. 12, 12, I believe 12, yeah. And were you rebellious at that time when he first came in? Cause you know, you're gonna have to get him a little hard time, be like, you know, yeah, you ain't I, my daddy type of thing. Yeah, not not too much, cause I had one of those mamas. Yeah. Mm. My mama fight you. <laughs> so, not too much. Not too much. Yeah, I mean, I was more like, mama, I don't like him, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You know? It wasn't, in his face telling him nothing, right. you know, because I'm gonna have to fight my mama, you know, so. <laughs> no, I didn't I didn't too much say nothing to him out the way. Mm -hmm. What did he do to prove himself? Because you know, you have he, a lot of relationships out here where um, men or women step into a relationship where there's already a child, and now they have to, I've heard so many people say, oh, I can't deal with her because of her child, because the child is disrespectful and she don't want me to discipline him or all sorts of stuff. What did he do to win you over, so to say? <laughs> well, first of all, my mother was an abused woman. Mm. And I grew up watching it, you know. Abused by your dad. Right. Mm. And 
and other guys. Okay. You know, not just my dad. Okay. Like other guys, and he was different. The first one that didn't do that. Right. Well, he's not the first one that didn't do it, but he stayed. Okay. And he took care of us as his own. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and he treated my mom like a queen, you know. Mm. And still, 30 years later to this day, they it's still the same. Wow. wow. You know, so, well, it's even better. I'm not going to say the same. It's, it's, it's even, it's better. Mm-hmm. And um, that's really how he won me over because he was good to us. He took care of us. I can, I can remember a time just as being a man, I can remember a time that he threw hay. Like, yeah. that's a man job. You mm-hmm. know? He bailed hay. Yeah, threw hay work, working for these people and he made $20 a day. Mm. Um, $20. You don't work eight hours to Dang, get $20. That's all. $20 a day. Just to come home to feed us. How many men would do that? But when did you find that out, though? I'm sure you didn't know that he was only getting that in the beginning. Mom, because my mom told me. You know, I, I found that out probably a couple of years ago. I, I did. I saw him doing it. You know, but you didn't know how much he was I didn't know how much money he was making. But right. me being a man now and me having my own stepkid, you know, and I'm like, yeah, you know. It's a different level of respect. Yeah. You know, so to this day, I still get more and more respect for him mm-hmm. because I'm like, I'm in your shoes now. You know, I'm 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 somebody husband. I'm somebody stepfather. I'm, you know, where when I was coming up, I was like, man, I don't I don't too much care for for him, you know. Not knowing that this is the best thing for you, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, because as children, all you want. think about is yourself, really. Right. That's really what it's. So I, you, I thought about me and my mama. You right. know, That's I, it. I, I, I like, but I kept noticing well, he loved your mama. He mm-hmm. taking care of her. He not putting his hands on her. That's mm-hmm. all I wanted to do is get big enough to protect my mama. Now, so, I got big enough now. You I said, didn't have to protect her. You said growing up, you saw, you. so you, did you ever see your dad lay his hands on your mom when you were younger, before she got with your stepdad? Yeah. And how that affected you? Did you ever, like, jump in the middle, try to stop oh, that? no, 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 no. My daddy, wow. No, no, no. I was, I was too little. Too I was little. young. You know, I'm probably, like, five. But how did that affect you? Five and you remembered all of that? Uh, I remember things. A long time ago, you know, when it's trauma, you you right. can remember things. How did that affect your relationships coming up? My mom always taught us to respect him, so she always told us no matter what happened between me and him, that's your daddy, and that don't have nothing to do with y'all. So we respect him still, regardless of what happened, and. You know, I can't really go too deep into that because it's something that my mom want to do herself, That's you know. Right. So I can't really tell her story. Mm-hmm. I can just tell the little part that, that I remember. Right, but right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like a story, almost a book. Wow. How many siblings do you have? Hmm? How many siblings do you have? Uh, I have two stepsisters. I got a brother and a sister. Okay. Mm-hmm. And all y'all ended up in the same household? Right? At one time, yeah. Growing up together? Yeah. That's cool. Wow. I just want to, um, you know, first off tell you, I don't remember seeing you in in, in the video. Uh, I'm, I'm in there. <laughs> wait a minute. I heard about it. I know I was told that today yeah. by a certain individual. But uh, so in order for me to believe that that was you mm-hmm. uh, on that song, mm-hmm. I need to hear that first part of that song when it come on. Yeah. Your boy stay fresh in a bed. Looking at my moves, trying to steal a nigga shit. Your boy stay fresh in a bed. Looking at my moves, trying to steal a nigga shit. They call me Mr. Hit That Ho. Call me Mr. Hit That Ho. Call me Mr. Hit That Ho. When I hit the flow, shorty, whoa. Whoa. Man, stop it, boy. I'm a music here, so I hey, ain't gonna lie for you for Man, a that too, was all right, man. That show was you. They can't lie about it. 
<laughs> Nigga, that was you. Why you doing that dance, sister? Nah, he wasn't doing the dance, sister. Did you? Yeah, not that one. Not that one. Not that one. But they let me rock with him a little bit. <laughs> I love that. Man, thank I you rock, so much. I rock man. with him a little I'm bit. I'm a huge fan, man. Like I said, I love that song, man. Uh, when y'all de- did that song, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Mr. Hit That Ho used to come here and shop for his clothes. Mm-hmm. This store was back. Think about it. It was here then. Yeah. You know, he would come here and shop. He knew my wife. He, he would come by and he was young, wasn't he? He was young. Mm-hmm. What did you think about it when you seen, you know, who he was, did you? No. I, no, I didn't. <laughs> She didn't know who he was. I didn't care. I, yeah. was, I just, treat everybody the same. That's so all. That's care. all. I was working a lot back then. So just like uh, we gonna get into that, man. Like that song, man. Um, that creativity, man. I know you. You and these guys got together. They was a little bit younger than you. Mm-hmm. It's a lot come with that song to unpack. You know, you guys uh, definitely um, y'all y'all made a difference in the boogie movement. For right, real. Right, right, yeah. um, no matter how things turned out, y'all mm-hmm. made a hell of an impact in the boogie movement. So uh, just give me a little rundown on let my listeners on Boss Talk 101 know how that whole situation came to be. Okay. So we all seem to have different stories. I've heard Trail Lee's story, I heard Mr. Hit that whole story. They all don't add all the way up. So here okay, goes my okay. story. I want to hear yours. You on Boston. You got to piece them all right. together to get right. real You got to piece them all together because it's truth in all of them. Right. I met Trail Lee doing his mother's cable. Okay. Okay. I used to work for the time on the cable, as I told you. Okay. I was doing a cable, Trail Lee, uh, I want to say Prince. Um, were outside and some of the other fellas that they hang with and they had the little song she a bad little bra bad yeah, bad yeah, okay yeah. well that and was on go the, in. that was on the radio that's what was on the radio at the time so of course I'm kind of new in town so I'm like oh man these are the little dudes that got their song on the radio I hear it on the radio so I'm ear hustling as they talking. I'm doing my job. So I came down and I told them, I say, so y'all do that music? And they were like, yeah, yeah, we got a song on the radio. I said, well, I do music too. So of course, I think they probably was in their early 20s. I think I was like 26, 25, 26 or something. And uh, I started rapping for them. So, Trail Lee, who he's a genius, he heard my voice and he said, man, we need to use dude. We need to use him for his voice. You hear his voice? So I told him that I was going to be at Palm Beach. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I perform at Palm Beach every, I believe it was a Thursday or something, Friday night or something. So me and my partner, we perform at Palm Beach. I come off the stage. Now, Mr. Hit That Hole was out there then. It was Trail Lee and Mr. Hit That Hole, and I don't remember if Prince was there that night, but I remember them grabbing me like this, you know, like, hey, we need to talk to you. We got something we want you to do. So, cool. The next thing I know, Trail Lee took me out to Arlington, and we recorded the song. I did not write the song. But y'all went straight and recorded this song. Yeah, not that day. I'm kind of like, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. When y'all would decide to go, this yes. is the song, the first this, song y'all yeah, did. Yeah, this is the first thing we did and the last thing. And the last yeah. thing. Yeah. It shouldn't have been, but that's well, how we going to get to that. But I, but right. this song, you go straight to the studio. Trilly wrote it. Trilly had wrote it. And he told me, do this here. So I sung it. And you sung it exactly like you just sung it a while ago, just like that the first time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I that, I'm talking about that that cadence yeah. and everything. Yeah, he told me, That's I want you just to do it just like this. Your boy stay fresh than a bitch. Looking at my mood, trying to steal a nigga shit. And I was like, okay, you know, I can take orders, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, because I knew 
hey, they on the radio. So mm-hmm. even if they use this, it's going to help me in some kind of way. Correct, right, correct. Right. I, I thought. So I'm going to do it. I'm not trying to charge them or nothing like that. I'm going to do it. So I get on there. And uh, then we'll I'll let you ask whatever question you want to go. No, no, you that. say you you say you you didn't you didn't charge them? Was it I, I did I did said it. two hundred dollars. Hmm? Was it was it a two hundred dollar charge for this? No. Who said that? Somebody said that you only wanted two hundred dollars. <laughs> so now I'm a smoker. <laughs> for the project. Man, cut it out. I'm bro. just telling you where it got cut back to You know what? But back then two hundred dollars might be two hundred dollars. I was making twenty five hundred dollars a week. God, you think I need two hundred? Ain't no two hundred dollars. So it was never two hundred dollars. That's cap. No, I'm I'm finna tell you. Okay. What so I I was at um, Club Blue. Okay. Okay. This song I did this song. I can remember. I can remember like now. Like if I just left the studio right now, I remember that. I got in my truck. I was in my truck. I worked in my work truck. I drove it out. Yeah. I got in my truck, and I was, because you got to think, this is something new. This this wasn't no music that was out. So this was something totally new from what we were doing. Uh, this was in the Dallas music. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Mr. Hit That Hole. It wasn't nothing else out like that, Mm-mm. if you can recall. Mm-mm. No, the Let's only see. song that was out during that time, what year was that? Uh, let me meet a line. What, 11? It might have been 11. It wasn't nothing I like it. I can tell you that. No, it was nothing I like that. Frankie you know, came out after that. Yeah, it was after that. It was kind of, that was what I similarized with after Mm-mm. that. But. No, that came out the, after that. I remember the song. Yeah, that that's came right. Out. It was nothing out like that. I say that to say, I didn't care for it, to yeah. be honest with you. And I'm like, I remember getting in my car like, that's some bullshit. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm, not, I get I'm, it. not front, I get it. I get I'm not fronting because I, I have But it some, came a hit though. Right, I but, know. But 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 still, you, I get what you said. Yeah, I'm not fronting, I never, we don't, it wasn't nothing out like that. So oh. I was like, man, that's some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Out of all the, Stuff we could have done now. What do you want me to do? Come in there and do that? Whatever. Now, I'm going to tell you how when you think you know music. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, a couple of weeks go by. That's, yeah, a couple of weeks go by. I remember I had another little song I was trying to push. And I could never get the DJ to play my song up up in Club Blue. I mean, up here in Club Blue. And come to find out, this was Trey Lee's cousin. <laughs> he wasn't hating on me. It's just I was coming at the wrong time. I'm trying to get him to play, which if any of y'all trying to get the DJ to play your music, you got to come before the club start. You can't come in the middle of your set and want him to play it, it because you can kill the crowd. Right. That's some free game. So that's what I was trying to get him to do. He took my CD and kept putting it to the side. You know, I'll check it out, I'll check it out. He never played. So of course I'm getting mad as hell. So I remember I remember I remember standing there looking out over the balcony, waiting on him to play my song, looking at all the people dancing and having a great time. And all of a sudden, and I re- recall, song. I never heard the song completed. All I heard is what I did in the headphones and leave. <laughs> I ain't never heard me play back or nothing. All of a sudden, I hear, your boy stay fresh than a bitch, and they going bananas. And I'm like, damn, what was that? <laughs> you didn't even realize. I didn't know it was me because it was mixed and mastered and everything. Right. And I'm like, ooh, that's a bad motherfucker. <laughs> But at the same time, I'm singing this song while it's playing, and not so not thinking not about thinking it. that. And I'm like, nigga, that's me. <laughs> I'm like, that's me. So I'm trying to tell DJ, that's me. He didn't believe you. He, nigga, that's Trail Lee now. That's my cousin. 
Nigga, that's me singing on that. Bro, I had the worst time trying to tell <laughs> people that's me. <laughs> to this day, people don't believe that's me. Oh, they believe you now. Why? They're going to believe me now. But they <laughs> didn't believe me. Through. All these years. Nobody believes me. Even if you sing it back the same they way, care. they, they still say, don't believe you. You sound like him. But it ain't you. Because you know people that sound like other people. Right. Bro, to hear, man, I'm watching them all the way in Germany playing, my, playing me and don't know it's me. Wow. How did that make you feel, though? Horrible. I feel horrible. What did you think? Like, because it was a lot that, that, that went on during this time. Uh, there was deals. You had record labels that you were signed to, right? Mm-hmm. When you went and did this song with them, were you signed to a label prior to? Mm -hmm. During as well. Mm -hmm. Did that cause any type of mm -hmm. issue? I would mm -hmm. think so. What type of issue did that cause? Well, I mean, I can't really get too deep into it because they had me to sign up. Away, a NDA, so oh, okay. okay, I can't get too far into it, but it did cause a problem. Um, because when you did this, you did not do it telling them that you were going to do this. Right. Well, okay. So what happened was with my label. You know how you sign with a label, uh -huh. and then that label don't never do anything with Correct. you. Correct, right. it's kind of self. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking, what? Well, hell, they ain't doing nothing with me. So obviously, I'm not on no label no more. Correct. Well, once I did this song, and the song picked up, the label still paying attention, and they, oh, that's our artist. This label was 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 this Black Magic? No. This is way after that. Dig, right? yeah. <laughs> Woo! I can't. Well, how yeah, you far? got up in there, dude. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, what, what was shout the out to Black Magic? I was going to shout you out anyway. <laughs> they done went up in there. Uh, no, no. Um, this is this was a label in Atlanta. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but um, actually. They were signed to Collie Park. They were signed to Collie Park. Yeah. But the label that I was with, she trained Collie Park. Wow. Oh. So she, she knew who he she was. She knew who he was. Oh, yeah. So it got deep. We gonna talk business, y'all. Right. You business, yeah. Because I'm like that when I think from a business point of view, I'm like calling them, like, hey, that's my artist. I need right. some revenue from that. We supposed to be getting paid for this. Right. Okay. So, re back, rewind because I can't let that two hundred dollars thing slide. That thing, <laughs> that's that is playing in my head. <laughs> Trying to play me with two hundred dollars. <laughs> I do recall. Once the song got hot, I kept trying to call Trail Lee, and he wouldn't. He answered the phone one time for me, and I was like, Trail, we need to do the paperwork on that song. I would have screwed myself royally if I'd have signed some paperwork with them. But because he didn't want to sign the paperwork, he kept pushing, you know, me, pushing me away and not answering the phone and everything. And I'm steady calling him and calling him. I'm trail, trail, we need to. And he would never, you know, do business like that. So then one day I got a call from somebody. Well, it was in August. It was in August, right before kids went to school. I remember me and my me and my wife was at the uh, getting the kids some uh, clothes for school, and I remember walking through there and Trey and them called me, and they were like, "Look, we got the paperwork for you. We offer you six hundred dollars." Oh, it's six hundred. That's my right hand guy. They would offer me six hundred dollars. I was offended. <laughs> I said six. I think I don't see how they rock into this song. And uh, that song is everywhere. They ain't finna give me no $600, bro. What's wrong with y'all? I said, and plus, what you don't realize is I've been in this game a long time. And for you to be calling me, offering me some money, you're finna get a deal. Yeah. Because I've been, I've been chasing you for months and you wouldn't call to answer the phone. So now all of a sudden it's important for you to 
hurry up and get me some money to get me sign this paper. Mm. Mm -mm. But now the lady done got a hold to it. Wow. Before I could get anything done, now all of a sudden she on they top, on his label top. Then I hear that I want to say he was here. I want to say Trill was here when he said that I at got this. Yeah, no, he yeah. never been. He here. never been here. Uh -uh. He was maybe a big deal. I don't know. One they of the probably other, one of the other guys. Yeah, it was one of the other people. But he said that I got thirty or forty no. forty thousand dollars. You what you do with that money? <laughs> he said I got thirty. It went from thirty to forty. Now, well, I, get, I ain't get no thirty thousand dollars. I ain't get no money like nothing like that. But like I said, it's I can't disclose what little change I got. But it wasn't. Rumor has it that like you that. got thirteen thousand dollars. No, that's not true. Mm -mm. Okay, that was a rumor. But even if it was, you said there's an NDA sign, so you still wouldn't have told us anyway what you got. <laughs> <laughs> you <heard some> more. <laughs> no, so at the end of the day, the song was so live and so dope, man. What if you could do anything different than what you've done? Um, what would you go back and change? Um, well, for one... I would have made sure that the label situation was because that hurt me as well, you know, when they popped up out the blue. Because I know I would have smoothed that over where I would have been able to do some more music with them or had my own deal with, you know what I'm saying? But besides that, that's about it because I didn't do anything. You so know, because of the label, you, you wasn't able to work with them anymore. Do you understand right. that when this happened, say, say there was hypothetically, and there more likely was, like you said, a deal on the table, mm -hmm. you having the confrontation with them, do you think that could have caused them a riff in them trying to do what they were doing? Uh, possibly. Because that's what, that rumor has it, I'm yeah. say allegedly, that, that, that they... As, as their career progressed, if things would have been done differently, they probably wouldn't would have been able to move on. I mean, if things had been done differently, so I you, mean, I, I didn't, I didn't do it. Yeah, know? yeah. So, lesson to all of the artists in similar situations like this: really, you should just before y'all collab to do anything or even put the song out really supposed to go to your labels and say, hey, we have this hot, we collabing. Right. Is that the way it's supposed to be? Or, I'm assuming had I signed that paperwork, if they would have got me to sign that paperwork, then they'd have been in the free and clear. Yeah, but you would have been screwed. I'd have been screwed, but I'm just saying, I mean, if you do your paperwork that you're supposed to do, if you do business, mm -hmm. And and I'm not saying they was trying to get over on me or nothing, but when it's a big song like that that come out, why keep me out of it when I was most of the song? Man, your hook was crazy. Yeah, it I, was big. I am it the was whole huge. Song. Mm -hmm. Why why have I never been on a show with you? You never been on the show with no. them? No, not one. I've never been on stage with them. But you were in a music video, were you? Yeah, that's because the label made them put me in. Well, mm. your your label made them put you in. Yeah, that was part of the agreement. And I bet did y'all talk that day? Yeah, I mean we're we're not into it. Like you know what I'm saying, it was it a, squash? A, but back back then, back then I'm talking then, about right. No, I mean it wasn't like we were ready to fight or nothing. They no, just wasn't saying nothing to me. I wasn't saying nothing to them. Mm. Y'all just kind of stayed y'all distance. Do you do the dance? Do the thing? And then and go. They walk their way. I went my way. You know, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't have preferred it like that. You know, would what I'm you have 
set the video up like that. The way that it was choreographed. The way that it was, not choreographed, but the way that it was, uh, what they call the treatment, the way that it was set up. <laughs> oh, I mean, what what part are you talking about? I mean, in the way that the video went, the mm -hmm. way that it flowed, the way it came on, the way it was set up. Oh, Would the way that yeah. how it came on and I should have been showed first? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm asking you. Like, you wouldn't have done it that way. Of course not. I mean, the first thing come on is me, but you see me a minute later on in the, to make it look like I'm just in the crowd. Some nigga in the background singing. If you recall, it's a Trelly, it's a Prince Rick when they rapping. When I start singing, it's a No. <laughs> Didn't see your name like, pop up. My name ain't pop up there, say wide frame. I'm like, wow, that's cold bloody right there. You and know, you I'm featured on the song. Why my name ain't on there? I'm talking about why they was they call me Mr. Hit That. Either way, it's a trail league across there. So that you know who that is that's rapping. And and you was younger too, so that you you had something to say back then. Yeah. You, you didn't say it in the public eye or you did you said something to somebody. You a young man. So you you wasn't gonna just take that laying down. Uh, I, I don't try to be too confrontational because yeah, but 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 he was already making money at that. Yeah, too, I mean, so I wasn't, I wasn't really, broke or nothing, but I he just didn't really care as much. Well, I did care because I wanted to do music. I didn't want to be working nowhere. I wanted to do what they was doing. They, you know, I'm. I felt like they feel like they didn't get to go farther. I feel like I pushed you where you got, and I didn't get to go. Wow. So imagine that. So I do it. I have sympathy? No, because I could have been right there with y'all if we hadn't have done all this crap that we did, you know? I wasn't trying to be in a group, and that's what I think they thought I was trying to be with them, with the three of them, and I wasn't. But if one of your hottest songs they had other hot songs, don't get me wrong. They hurry up and got a new one. But one of your hottest songs out, why I'm never on there, and, and y'all got it looking like Mr. Hit That Ho is the one singing this song. Because when I saw the, when I, I don't remember the, the video or anything like that, but right. hearing the song, I never knew there was another person. <laughs> At all. <laughs> I, but there was also a remix with him and Zero and all of them. Let's talk about that for a second. That was a remix with you, the role, uh, uh Zero, and of course th th those guys, you know, Trilly and all. So, so how was that? You weren't on there. Yeah, he was on there. No, they just put me on there. You know, once you record it, you're recorded. You know. So that your they name just, was on there, though. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm not talking about. In the, the font. Well, you I'm talking, talking about, about being like there, you got it right there. On the video. Yeah, yeah when the video that? playing, like my name is right there. Yeah. Like that. It, they they it name came there. across like that while they did were you, rapping. Did you, when you heard the remix, what did you think about it? Because that had to be something. Um, I mean, I was excited. Don't get me wrong. Right. I was excited, but I, I had a lot of them cats on my own song. You know, I had my own hit. I know, yeah, I know about but, that. We're going to get into yeah. that, but I'm just saying for them to do the remix and then for y'all to have contention a little bit about the way things was going, y'all younger. And it's been years now. I know all that's under the bridge, of course, but when you heard the remix, it had to either make you excited or like I, I was, I was excited, but I was... I, all of this stuff made me kind of sick at the stomach because... I mean, they getting to it with my my voice. I'm not getting, I'm, I'm still paying to get in the club, you know? Wow. I'm still paying to get in the club and they banging me at the club. And because again, people did not um, believe that two it was here. No, they're not putting anything. two and two together. They're not believing it. And if you're not telling them who I am, who they gonna believe? If I tell you, this is my new single. This is me and, and Prince Rick. 
who they gonna believe when I come and say, hey, that's me singing on there. They didn't say you was on there. This was a huge song for that time period. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest songs to come through the Metro for the boogie movement. Mm -hmm. Dallas never seen a, I don't even know, you could argue the fact that it was, you had my Dougie, you had that one. What else you had that was big? During the, you know, like man, this. it was a bunch of bunch of big songs. Hump, right? Hump did what? It was uh, we had him on here. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a lot of big songs, but that one there sticks out to me because yeah. he shopped here during the time mm-hmm. for sure, and just just the fact of that dance, man. Yeah. Did you even know? Like when they started saying, "What they hit that? What is this?" You didn't even know it was a dance to it when you were singing it. Huh? You knew it was gonna be a dance to it when you sang it. <laughs> And there's something else that I never heard them talk about. It was presented to me as this song was for, and this is going to make sense. This song is for our dancer. Mr. Hit That. Right? This song is for our dancer. Uh, It's what Trey Lee told me. I want you to come and do this hook for me because we're doing this for our dancer. For when he come out, he have his own song. Why would I say they call me Mr. Hit That Ho if my name is Wide Frame? The song was for the dancer, mm-hmm. Mr. Hit That Ho. So when he out there doing his thing, they call me Mr. Hit That Ho. That's why you're saying that. That's why I'm saying that. For the last... Whatever years when people did realize I'm Mr. Hit the Hole and I have to keep correcting, I'm not Mr. Hit the Hole. Well, you say you Mr. Hit that Hole, so you know, I'm trying to battle that, you know, because it wasn't put out correct, mm-hmm. you know, it became like a, a dance song of, 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 I don't know, but it was supposed to be for Mr. Hit that Hole. And it just did not end up being that, as I could tell. Wow. You know, uh, because people didn't get the, they didn't get the message. Wow. Wow. Dog, that's crazy, man. Like, Dallas was crazy back then, and you came in in the middle of a, of a, of a, uh, of a hell of a, a, a time. You had another deal uh, with some, with a Houston. Uh, you had a deal in Houston. Yeah. What, yeah. what was that about? I mean, <laughs> what happened up there? <laughs> you know, you went through a lot, though, wide frame. Let's man, be real. I've been through a lot. You've bro. been through a lot, man. Um, mm-hmm. We go, you know, we don't even talk about, you know, you know, the the kidney, of course. But my God, man, how have you sustained all these years, man? It's God, man. Got to I mean, be God. It, it ain't nothing else. I, I've I've been. What we say in Arkansas and maybe somewhere around here, but I've been took down through there. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I done been down through there, man. <laughs> but you're still here for you're a still reason. Still, for a reason. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I done been took down through there. What happened in Houston? <laughs> Boy, I don't know how you know all this. Somebody <laughs> tell it my business. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I uh, did a did a jump. Okay. So, you know they had those Was this after that song? No, no, no. This This is before. before. Let's talk about it. This. What inspired you into that song. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) This inspired you. It shot you out of killer. So, check me out. Matter of fact, this so long ago, this when, um, uh, what was that DJ name? It was before Baby was even here. Greg Street. Greg Street. I just talked to him uh, about a little bit, about a week or so. It was ago. Greg Street. When I was trying to get him to listen to my music, he wouldn't pay me no attention. <laughs> I said, God damn, well, <laughs> I thought I was good. Uh, How was you presenting this stuff? Wait, wait. What song did you have back then that you was presenting? Was it a singing song? Yeah, I mean, I I rap too, but I mean, what was you presenting to them that that you felt like they should listen to that they weren't uh, listening to? Man, I don't even remember no more. It was you so see what I'm ago. saying? You had, yeah. you was presenting the hell out of some some songs. I, to I these was, DJs. man, but they they was not trying to hear it. Anywho, 
So, uh, <laughs> I was at that convention. It was a, it was a convention that they was having, and um, I met these guys R and D distribution. Okay. And R and D heard me. I was going up against um, MC Eight. Okay. MC Eight's artist. He had an okay. Artist. So he was upstairs rapping. You talking about MC8 out of LA? Yeah. Okay. MC8 little artist was upstairs rapping. And I had met R and D and we were going upstairs to talk about signing me. So we come off the off the thing, he was like, Can you take him? I'm like, what? So I come over there to him. And uh dude was like, What you think you want it? I'm like, bro, don't Play yourself. <laughs> Don't do this. So he wanted to do it. So I smashed him. Easy. Easy. Because my my rapping style, which I don't use no more, which everybody keeps telling me, you need to go back to that. I don't use my I, I use the pull out the magnum type of deal, which yeah, that's yeah. not how yeah. I rap. But uh I Whose smashed. style did you, what kind of style did you have? I was more like, uh, that was very aggressive. Like, um, let me see something back then. Say, like, um, look this here, big daddy. Clean in the cab there. Escalate, ride. The broke niggas is mad at me. Probably want to wet me, but I'm throwed off. Uh, and they know I keep that. Chopping saw it off, I knock a head off. ARK rapper, slit the D town boys, crown frame a wrecker. Frame is the man, sipping on a leader. Keep a yellow bitch, never treat her, but I beat her. I beat her for the head, beat her for the leg. Since I ain't shit, hit the bitch purse and fled. Heard what I said? I beat her for the leg. Man, I hit that bitch purse for a second, then I fled. Man. I'ma come down. Big body swing. I ain't in the lack of mini candy blade lane. Wide frame hanging, Man. piece and chain dangling. Never ball fade, but these short ways be banging. But what y'all thinking? I dream of genie. You can find me flying in the red Lamborghini. Girls in bikinis wanna kiss my belly. They don't come in frame. They say, "Whoa, big daddy!" Hey, Whoa. stop playing, man. I like that. Wide frame, it, man. Beast mode. Had it all the way, even back so I, then. Man, so I ate him up, you know, and. I told him, bro, don't. <laughs> so crazy. I loved it. I said, don't do that. Man. I'm, don't, don't do it. And he did. And you had to do what you had and to I do. Had what to did do they it. say after you done that? Man, R.D., they would love uh, it. Was, yeah, of course they loved it. They loved it. MCA. MCA pulled in, man. You get <laughs> MCA got that <laughs> nigga <laughs> out of the world. Say, nigga, you get back. And MCA, he remember that day. I know you do. No. <laughs> Texas, man, man, stop playing, man. Arkansas, so Texas. Because man. I heard, I heard the artist when he was. I'm sorry. You knew, you heard him. When I he heard was him. When he I'm like, boy, you are gonna lose. Don't do this, man. When I came up, I said, don't do it. Just leave me alone. Don't do this. <laughs> you try to stop him. I tried to tell him when I walked up to him. I said, I'm finna just, you know, I'm trying to tell him I'm gonna just go back where I'm going. He told me, Nah, what you, what you got? Okay. Man, the because you frame seem alone. so reserved and humble, and so so when you start rapping, it's like it's you see energy. a totally different energy. person. Yeah, <laughs> man, but, but that's crazy, man. Because like like after that day, you you they definitely signed you that day. <laughs> they signed you up quick, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> man, okay, let me run y'all on through that so we don't be here all night. Uh huh. R and D, I went with R and D. Uh, so I done moved in with my old lady. Um, this before the twenty five hundred, and you know what I'm saying. That all we talked about stuff that happened later. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So at this time, I, oh, I, you really I, broke. I wasn't broke, but this is prior to meeting Trailina. 
Yeah, so you thinking you this this you you probably around about twenty three, twenty four. Mm 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 mm. This is around the same time. Oh, okay. So you around yeah, the same time between I, I met my I met my wife when I pretty much met Trey Lee now. Wow. Yeah, around the same time. Mm. I might have been with her four or five months before I met them. Wow. So at that time I was making money because I was still doing the cable. Yeah, yeah. But I probably was doing about Fifteen hundred dollars, something like that, a week. But I make twenty five hundred later on. But uh, what was I at? What was you I were just saying oh, that, uh, you R &D. that uh, yeah, R and D. So, old nigga moment. <laughs> so, I have them too. No, I know you know already gonna be talking. Hey, old nigga, yeah, old nigga moment. So, I went to Houston. Went up into this, I guess they, they do distribution. Mm -hmm. So they you behind this big metal gate. And uh, they took us behind the metal gate, closed us in, took us out to eat and everything, but they kept saying some shit. <laughs> they kept saying, oh yeah, look how, look where Wireframe taking us. Wireframe taking us out to eat. We had went to... Um, some Chinese restaurant, but it was expensive. Talking about this on wireframe right here, and I'm thinking like, why they keep saying that? Nigga, I ain't got no money to pay for this. Not all of us. It's probably like 15 of us. At the Poway Wowie or whatever it was, the Poway, Poway, you know what I'm talking about? Um, payway. Payway. Yeah, we in there. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, why they keep saying that? They ordering up. Get what y'all want. I'm saying it like what they I had to clutch my pearls. What is a thousand dollar bill? Yeah, what are we doing? Why do you keep saying this on me? Why? Because he put it on my my tab. Of course. Uh, yeah, what you know. Because you are you, yeah, you're my You try to run it yeah, up. Yeah, you running it up. You got a three sixty deal. That <laughs> four ninety deal. Uh four ninety. So I said, uh I don't know what that means. So make a long story short, I um I go down there with them. Dude, take my I had a producer with me. Uh my boy KP. What's up, KP? Took KP down there. We went down there. And they did me dirty. They told me that I had signed for three hundred thousand mm. dollars. I asked for the three hundred thousand so that I can go and Go in the studio, they ask me, what, $300,000? Mm. Show me in your contract what it was $300,000. And what happened was I signed, and the contract was on a separate paper saying that we're going to give you 300000 It wasn't in the contract. Wow. See, I learned all the lessons, you know, but I didn't know no better. make sure it stay right here, yeah, all together. They got to all be in the contract, mm. not on a separate paper. So, it wasn't nothing on there saying that they was going to give me 300000 Wow. And they absolutely did not give us $300,000. How much money did that contract say they were going to give you? Nothing. Zero. Nothing. So, but you know you can't have anybody on the contract and don't give them anything. Right. That's what so, I like. They did give us something. <laughs> Sheesh. How you find it? What uh, they, <laughs> they give you? <laughs> so, uh, they gave me, they got me an apartment. They got us an apartment. We got an apartment over there in Yellowstone. And they were paying the apartment. They paying the apartment. They would buy us food. <laughs> and they would give us $75 a week mm. wow. in a check for us. Come get us to go cash this check for $75, grown as men. So I'm going through that for, I think I let that go on for, because I'm steady thinking like, okay, it's gonna come. Yeah, I just gotta go on and finish this album. So I did a whole album for them. The only album that I've ever completed. 
What was the name of that album? Uh, the wait is over. I ain't. I don't know. You probably can find it, but I. I uh, wow. Yeah, but I never really put it out. Was it our rap or was it R and B or what? A little bit of. Both? I don't. I don't just. I don't got no R and B stuff. Well, I just. Well, I, say, do you sing, do sing, I do sing. I do sing, but I I came out as a rapper. I just I sing and rap just like you know the child. Which one you do better? Uh, probably sing. That singing go hard. Let me hear a little bit. I never thought that it wouldn't be uh, you would turn and do this to me. Uh, I can't let the love we have in between us merely fade away. Mm -hmm. You told me you'd never go away. Uh, and for me, you'd always be here. Now you tell me there's something wrong uh, and you must move on. A lonely heart it would I feel When no one cares for me Let me show you now The way that it would be If you were with me now I can feel the love we share When you say it's not there Deep inside I know that you still care, man. And the funny thing when I'm, I'm looking, say that day, man. Say, when I'm looking at him, I'm thinking I'm gonna hear that deep, raspy he voice, jamming, man. He and then you come out with this. No, I, I can, you, well, I, listen, you man. do different ranges, man. I can tell you right now, you know, no, no I'm saying, listen, multi talented, man. You know, uh, you know, and then Cricket took him right on into rapping after that. <laughs> 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 so let me talk about um so now going forward Cricket X. You that's his boy, that's what Cricket X. He took you, him to the rapper. What year did um you find out you had a kidney problem? Twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. And before this were you having health problems? Oh uh, yeah. But I mean, it was it was just like you know your regular high blood pressure or, you know, I had a, a nephrologist. You know, you know he was study asking me. Um, he kept asking me, "Are you on drugs? Are you on drugs?" And I'm like, "Why you keep asking me that?" Mm -hmm. He was like, "Because your your levels are not right." And I'm like, "Man, I'm not on no drugs. I don't drink. I don't do nothing." But he just kept every time I come. He was like, "Are you sure?" Wow. He like you're doing something, and he didn't check your kidneys at that time. Yeah, he was of course. That's what oh, he does. Nephrologist. Yeah, right. he he kept asking me, but what I was doing was taking ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. That's does what that? blew my kidneys out. Yeah. Really, I've never. I really. I was taking too much. How much? How much ibuprofen were you taking a day? A thousand milligrams. Wow. A day? Every morning. And every night or just every morning? Every morning. I mean. Every you, day. You heard every day, yeah. Because that's what I'm telling you. I was doing cable. Yeah. So I'm clock, but. And your feet was hurting. My feet was hurting. So you took Because that. I wouldn't wear my boots. Okay. I wearing tennis shoes. Can't do that. Weighing 300 pounds up on the, up on the ladder. Mm -hmm. So the bottom of my feet started hurting. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't get it to stop. And had a toothache. On top of that, so the teeth and that the ibuprofen was the only thing that would stop it. I didn't know ibuprofen could give you a kidney problem. A little yeah, back of the bottle. I knew that. Really? They tell you to blow your kidneys out. Um, mm. well, it have to give you hope, you know. Like I think about Scarface; he went through kidney issues. Did you mm -hmm. know that? Mm -hmm. And he, I think he found he got a kidney, didn't he? His son gave him. His son gave him a kidney. Like, does that give you hope? Like when you see stuff like that happen? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I, I already know I'm going to get one. I just got, like, I've lost some weight. I just got to lose a little more weight. They're going to give me a kidney on oh, top of the list. Oh, they already have one. Oh, oh you're on top of the list? Yeah, I'm at the top of the list. But in 2000, you said it's 2011 when they found out, right? Mm -hmm. So when they found out your kidney was that bad already at that time when they found out where they couldn't just put you on um, steroids and stuff and try to help it? I don't know. They're they going to put you on. 
dialysis is is the new thing. That's the way. I don't know if y'all noticed that. No, the reason no, why they I'm asking, everywhere. I know them dialysis. Yeah, that's the new way now. No, but the reason why I'm asking, you know, because I remember I have had kidney problems before. Mm-hmm. Um, I, when I was 13 years old, mm-hmm. um, I had what they call glomerular nephritis. Mm-hmm. So I would swell up like really big because my kidneys you wasn't. Flush. It couldn't flush, whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, they put me on a diet when I was in the hospital. I lost like a lot of weight. And um, they put me on steroids. And one thing doctors tell you because they don't want to give you any guarantee. They say you might be on this for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Or it might be okay. Two to three years later, after checking, they reduced the steroids, and I didn't have to take it anymore. Thank God, you know, mine wasn't that. But I've met so many people in that hospital because everybody on my floor was doing kidney transplants, flew in to do kidney transplants, all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. But that's the reason why I was asking you. At the time that they caught it, they couldn't just give you, like, medication and it'd be okay. Or did they catch it too late? They didn't. Because I did dialysis too. And yeah. they, every week they had to do. I hated needles before this, mm-hmm. right? When you have a kidney problem, there's no way you can hate needles because they draw blood like almost every single all week. All day. Yeah. All the time. So I got so used to that. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is that it they couldn't like just with medication. I I mean I don't know what they could have done, but they mm-hmm. didn't. They didn't. Yeah, they um. I, I <clears throat> my nephrologist gave me medicine, but once again, he never knew what was going on with me, right? So I was at home. At, at my apartment, I was using the restroom. I I remember this like it was yesterday. I was sitting in, on the rest on the toilet, and I kind of like did like this. I'm like, whoa, you know, I was like about to pass, pass out. out. Yeah, and I'm like, what just happened? So I got up, cleaned myself up, washed my hands, and but I'm like very dizzy, and. I remember getting to my bed and I kind of like passed out. I was out. So when I woke up, I'm like, I got to get to the hospital. At this time, I had both of my kids, my, my two daughters. So I'm thinking like, my baby's going to be home out the wild and I'm not going to be here if I go to the hospital. But I got to go because something is wrong with me. So I dro- <laughs> I drive to the hospital. Now, at this time, my wife and I, we, we wasn't together no more. We split up for like four years. Uh, she had always told me, go to Presbyterian. I always go to Presbyterian. Presbyterian. So, I could have went right to Arlington Memorial. I lived in Arlington. I've driven all the way to Dallas. Wow. To go to Presbyterian in this condition. Like dizzy and, you know, I get to Presbyterian and I almost like I was almost crawling to get in there because I couldn't walk that fast because I had so much fluid on me. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. I had so much fluid on me and I got in there and the lady checked my blood pressure or something. She checked something and she like, oh my God, you know, she was like, he's finna die. Mm. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm in what? Mm. You know, so they hurry up, took me in the back, and immediately put me on dialysis. So I mean, it wasn't it wasn't like my doctor sent me to do that, right? You know, they I was at home and I went to the hospital and I got put on dialysis, and I've been on it since that day. Wow. Wow, and how long ago you were on the list? When did they put you on the list for no, no, our new no, no. kidney? I said I will be on the top of the list. Uh, the doctors, I've been, after you've been on 10 years, you're at the top of the list. Okay. You see what I'm saying? You okay. just have to be able to do what they want you to do, which is 
uh, I didn't want me to be under 300 pounds. Well, I was almost 400 pounds. How okay. much are you now? Uh, probably like 350, 340, mm -hmm. something like that. So you on a diet, on a specific diet? Yeah, I'm, I've got a lot of junk going on, but I'm, I've been losing it. Because I remember when I was there, they told me, for me personally, I couldn't have anything with salt. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I had to, like, boil all my food that I eat. Mm -hmm. I couldn't season it with no salt, so I had eaten everything bland. Mm -hmm. Is that how you have to do it, too? No. Okay. I mean, they, they probably want me to, but want that's not to. what I'm doing. You need, <laughs> it helps you drop it really quick. Okay. I'll give it a <laughs> shot. Oh, I got to get back to the music. Go ahead. We got to talk about Pull Out the Magnum, right? Mm -hmm. Um. Was that a song? Uh, that song there was, it was nice. I don't think it was Mr. Hit That. No. <laughs> but it was nice. Don't try to put me out there like that. <laughs> to let you come in and do but it. But it was a nice song. Yeah. It was a, when you did that it song, did, it, what type of mind state were you in? I'm finna tell you. It wasn't a Mr. Hit That because it didn't have the engine that Mr. Hit That. Okay. But my song is steady moving right now. Right now. So don't even trip. Without an end in behind it. <laughs> really? But that's just you. Your voice is just unique. Yeah. And, and and if anybody, you, some <clears throat> say you should have been a Nate dog when it come to music in, this, in these parts. I ain't mm. going to even say Dallas. Just in the South. You're like, you should have been a Nate dog of the South. It's what everybody says. And maybe. There was so much music that you could have brought mm -hmm. to this city. If and I, really I was I was I was trying, man. But like I said, when when and not to, not to go backwards, but when I got when I went through kidney failure, I didn't I didn't know if I was gonna be here. Wow, you see what I'm saying? It affects. I need to say that too. Yeah, priorities changed. Yeah, so I was like, I'm not worried about no music, I, even though I know this is my livelihood. I got to do this, but then I had to when I had my my kids by myself. You know, I can't keep leaving and getting people to watch my kids while I go do a show. You know what I'm saying? Eventually something is going to happen, you know. Yeah. I got two daughters, yeah. and they both beautiful, you know, two mm -hmm. nice-looking daughters. I could have a woman over here watching, and she bring her dude over here and anything. You know what I mean? So I was like, I always think forward. You know, I'm like, eh, anything could happen. I'm steady leaving my daughter with, my daughter's with, you know, whoever people, mm -hmm. even though I know them, <clears throat> I might not know the people that they got yeah, around. That's them. tough, how, right? How old are your daughters now? Uh, my kids grown. I know. Uh, got one that's twenty five, one that's twenty three. Wow, you still spend a lot of time with them. They in Arkansas. I mean, I oh, they went back down there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, they they grown, got their own thing going on. They got kids and stuff now. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I got one grandbaby that All was right. born on my birthday. Hey, uh -huh. boy, girl, little boy. That's hard, man. You don't do spend time with him. Uh, it's complicated. Yeah, it's life. Yeah, I mean, not yet. I haven't been able to get down there yet. We got to make that happen. Yeah, we got to make that happen because that ain't that hard. How old is the grandbaby? Uh, it's been uh, since August. Oh, just born. Yeah, just born. Okay. Cause she ain't living. It ain't been but a month she or two, but you gonna get to see. But how the baby look? Look like you? I guess. I mean, yeah. They say she look like me. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. That's hard. I'll show y'all. That's family, man. But uh, we gotta talk about uh, pull out the magnum too. Talk so. about it. Go ahead. Well, we just gotta. You know, the song was dope. Your voice is just unique, and and. A blessing even, man. You done blessed this show. I'm so glad I got to do this interview. You brought me joy. I appreciate it. I'm be that, honest man. with you. You know how I am about the mm -hmm. music. But you really a talented brother. Like, a lot of brothers can, they sit in that seat. They ain't got that kind of talent. God blessed you, man. Yeah, man I appreciate and, it. And, and, and even with what we got, it still was a lot. You know, mm -hmm. for us just, Carver Mr. Hit, that is a song that you can't get it out your mind. And I know that's your voice. I only have Especially to Especially just that, that verse. Man. That, that man, verse is like. Like, it's crazy. So when you did pull out the magnum, was that like a, afterwards you like, I'm, I'm you know. Oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> hey, the congratulator was, was a little worse, but. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been digging. Boy. 
But but <laughs> yeah, you've been digging. God, but, but what you expect? But I didn't the, know. But at the end of the day, um, you we don't did, even want to talk about it. I'm willing to talk about all of it. Well, hey, the congratulator <laughs> is one that you did as a diss reference. You kind of that was a get back. Like you was like, oh, I got let but why did you do that song? Why? Yeah, why? Because I mean, they wasn't they wasn't they wasn't letting me. They was ignoring you. Yeah, they wouldn't let me get no shine. I'm watching. I'm like, y'all run around here. Ain't nobody. Neither one of y'all is telling nobody that this is me. I'm like, what is that about? Wow. Why y'all ain't telling nobody that's me on this song? What is that? You know, and that was before any of the paperwork, and you know, this was prior to all of that. It's just like you just gonna use the old nigga for us. You're uh, not even that old. You 25, no, was, 26 at the time. But he was older than them. Yeah, he was older than them. He was older than them. You was an old nigga. We gonna use the old nigga voice and what you want? This this our song. You know what it is? This our song. No shame. We're supposed to be on this song in first. I know. I know. But your your voice, man, it fit perfect. He and I, you know, we had a little. little Falling out. You in no shame? Yeah. No shame, a good dude, man. How you and you a good dude? How the hell did that happen? I really people don't even talking? remember no more. Yeah, a lot of people talking. So, yeah. I don't even remember no more because we squashed it. I remember sitting down with him. At, That's uh, good. And I love, I love no shame, man. He's a good guy. He got a good heart. You got a great heart, so I couldn't see that even happening. Right? Mm. No, we we was into it. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. Like we, bad. Both yeah. of y'all talented. Was it because y'all both talented as hell? Mm -mm. We was into it because of Trailing them. You know, them is people. Okay. Yeah, so it was all, like, a lot of stuff happened, like, a lot of opportunities for me I didn't get to get because that whole incident. of this incident with them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The city riding with them. Do you think because you wasn't from here that that weighed a part on it? Probably, because I don't have no hood or nothing for around. I know that, but right. you see what I'm saying? Yeah, but I don't have nobody I can holler, I'm from this side, I'm from the this, and I'm... No. That's probably, that played a, a, a part in it, and had to, because because you felt like, okay, I, well, they, you know, the city, you know, these boys from North Dallas, ain't they? Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Where they from? Right here. They from the Grove? What the hell? And he ain't been on here yet. I got to get Trilly. I'm going to bring him on here. Believe me. You know Mr. Hit that be on here. That's my guy. He I just watched him yesterday. Yeah, he be on here. He going to come. He more than likely be back probably in really? a few weeks. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I, I rock with him. He been coming in since he was a kid. And, well, I know. I, but, I, but he hadn't but he hadn't came in a long time until I got him back over. I, you know, once the show got going, everybody coming through, mm -hmm. showing love. You know, I can't be mad at nothing that's happening with Boss Talk. I'm going to keep these these microphones, good people sitting in front of them, you know. That's good. But man. the thing, like it's it. an outlet to where it's counseling, it's meditation, it's a lot of mm -hmm. stuff goes on in here, man. Mm -hmm. So it's God, you know. Um, but... Pull out the Magnum did good. When you, I know you said if you had that bag, bag behind it, but it still did did what it did what it did. I had, uh, I had a dude that helped me push this song. Uh, he was one, he was a good friend of mine, and his name is uh, DJ VP. Okay, and. VP stayed up countless numbers of hours, even when I was in the bed, promoting, promoting, promoting. Doski did the beat. Doski did the beat. Uh, Doski Baby. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> he stayed up countless amount of hours pushing the song because I didn't know anything about pushing social songs. media. Mm -hmm. Of course. So that's he did that. You know what I'm saying, and I would, I would stay up doing it too, but not like him. So shout out to VP, uh, shout out to a lot of people that that have helped me out. But we'll get to the shout outs at the end. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I wanted to speak on VP because he was very detrimental to pull out the mag. Wow, uh, the success of it. You know, a lot of people like would see why frame 
flooding Facebook. Flooding. They like, damn, what is who, who pushing your stuff? Wow, because he was pushing because he, he was, was up doing all day doing it. Mm-hmm. All day. Mm-hmm. Like he had to believe in it. Yeah. So I want to give him his flowers because I, I don't feel like I gave him his flowers. Wow. Uh Doski baby. I want to give him his flowers. He made me a hot track. Some kind of way we fell out. I don't know wow. what that's about. I really mm. don't. Um, I don't know why people get the wrong idea about stuff. Um, <clears throat> I think he, for some reason, thought that I told him that I was going to get him 50% of everything. Like I was really going to do a show and get him 50% of the money. Does that make any sense? Well, I think I hear about the fifty percent credit law on the producing part. Yeah, you get that. But, but I'm talking it. about you. I'm, I'm not. I'm gonna jump around and get musty on stage and come get you fifty percent of my money. Never. <laughs> so I mean, that, that's how we fell out. And I was like, "What? Really? You really thought that? I never told you that." At the end of the day, get everything in writing. Then you don't have. It to was worry in writing. About, yeah. And it but didn't it say said fifty percent. It didn't say I never. I told him 50% of, I'm talking about 50% of your, you know, everything Bunchy. that you did. Because, yeah, I'm going to leave that part alone. But the publishing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he thought that when I go do a show, I owe him some money. Nah. Yeah, a lot of times uh, being new in the game, like like a lot of times people be learning. I, I remember talking about Birdman and, them being young, or even if it was Jay Prince or whoever, or if it was Jay-Z, whoever, Master P. They all went through that stage. They all went through this young stage right. that you and Trilly and, and you know, uh, Mr. Hit That. Everybody, don't nobody want to give themselves the understanding that you learning when you first come into this game. Mm-hmm. Everybody want to act like they all, they, already know. they know, and it, it's not like that. Anything you do, you and I both know this, and you know this, it's something that you grow as you right. go. And some of the mistakes you make up front, you will never make in the end. Some of those same things that you guys done early on today, whether it was Trilly or Prince or or, 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 either, or, or Mr. Hit That, you wouldn't dare do those things because you've matured so much. I'm being real. Right, right. We know that. So that's a good thing, man. So you guys came to grips. I know at some point y'all came to grips. So y'all have never... Uh, yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> <laughs> because it was never any words with me and nobody. It was just me and Trey Lee. Yeah. I, I talked to him because that's who I dealt with. Yeah. I never talked to Prince and him about nothing. Oh, yeah. You know, so it was always I had issue with Trey. So, but we kept seeing each other at the airport because I had moved to Atlanta. And I would be at the airport and, you know, he'll look taller than I am. Yeah. So... I would see him, and I ain't miss him because I'm up here, and then he up a little higher than me. So I would see him in the airport, and usually he come in Dallas or he going to Atlanta. So I had I see him. I can't act like I don't see him. And uh, we ended up talking, and he was like, "Man, it's been too many years. You know, let's let's squash this or whatever." And I'm like, "I, I mean, I've been through with that. I'm not, you know, I'm too old for that." That's great. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't wish nobody no harm. I don't, I don't, I didn't do this interview to start nothing back up, but I did. I needed to say my piece. It's been too many years and went by. Everybody said they peace except me. Wow. And but it's your first interview like yes, this. That's why, that, yeah. It's the hardest one, too. Bro. I have that's never, one thing I've I'm gonna tell never you. Done you came to the right coming. place, boy. They're going to yeah. see you on Boss Talk 101. I know it. And, they, and it's going to be spectacular. I've never, and yeah. that, <laughs> this is the first time I've revealed that I had kidney failure. None of my fans knew wow. what was going on with me. Uh, nobody knew why. I haven't put out anything since Pull Out the Magnum. Yeah, they thought that I was one hit wonder and just fell off, which is not the case. Well, you know, so like, you're not like, able like, to um, do music. Yeah, with? I'm gonna do something now. That's why I'm here. That's why I hear he getting ready to gear up. <laughs> Look at it. Right. I can tell you right now, you definitely the music is in you, bro. 
Mm-hmm. Man, I, I can't, I can't, I can't stop, man. Send because, you, bro. Um, I gotta leave. I gotta leave something behind. If God do take me, I need to leave something behind. Well, you definitely did on Boss Talk One One. I'm yeah. gonna tell you something, man. Um, the one thing I do, that's why I do this. I tell my wife all the time because we ain't gonna be here forever. Right. This here is all about that. You know what I mean? You look at people who've been here who not here no more. Warty Two Live. Yeah. Uh, who? What's the other guy? Uh, Walk Like Jordan, mm-hmm. and the other kid Strap. All them folks been on this panel and they're not here no more. But I thank God that we got you know to 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 talk to those kids, to talk to that young man. And you, every time we talked about God, mm-hmm. every time it wasn't a time. That's what I thank God for being able to go back to all of my segments. And I talk to these kids, or I talk to these young men, or talk to people like yourself, and I can reflect the saying, man, but God is good. Mm-hmm. Man, but God is real. Man, I love God. Some people will say, man, you say this, you say that, man, but you, God, you got to, you know, you can't. <clears throat> man, let me tell you something, man. You got to worship God where you stand. It don't matter. And God will meet you where you at. Right. You understand what I'm saying? He don't, you don't have to wait till you get good enough. You can never be good enough. Mm-hmm. You already where God needs you to be. He'll meet you right where you at if you just talk to him. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I don't even play with it. That's mm-hmm. what this all about. To be honest with you, is meeting people and talking to them and and hey, let them tell their story and tell them about how God changed my life just like He changed yours. That's mm-hmm. what it's about. So I just be enjoying it. And the stories, that's the history of the culture. Mm-hmm. Your story, your history of the culture can help some other young kids out there who coming together with a group to get their paperwork right. right. To get to understand how to do the music part or how to do the podcast or, or part. Or how to sit here or, and uh, end up in the same situation. Exactly. Now somebody might see this and say, I can't be taking them ibuprofens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> just being real. a lot of people doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I didn't know at all because my doctors never told me about that. Mm-hmm. They not. Because it's, it's business. It's business. Yeah. It's business. So, so I'm going to throw all my ibuprofen at home. No, no, you're no, not going to do that. I, I, was, I was abusing them. Yeah. You know? Top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Um, Top three. You've heard that on here. Yeah, I know. Number one. Bun B. That's my boy. I just Number two. Quit it. That's my dude. Bun B. That's my bun beat up. Big bun beat up. Ooh, yeah. that bun B, yeah, man. That Number two. Hey. Why? Oh, hell no. We ain't moving Why? that fast. Uh, What's your favorite song with him? Um, man, you put me on the spot. That murder. Uh, Everybody yeah, like you do that murder. Yeah. <laughs> Big Bon B, the man. That's I. I love Bon B, man. I don't lyrically. I, I wish he would have came harder on the on the what's the name. I know he could have went harder on uh on the BT thing. On the BTE, yeah. that's business. That's about that's business. Right. I wish he would have just murdered that. Man, you talented as hell, man. God, your voice is it, dope, boy. All them years, man, I did not even think about who the, who was on that song, man. Nobody. I, I mean, never even think of that's what's crazy. Okay. <laughs> so number number <laughs> one is Bum B though, man. Let me mm-hmm. tell y'all something, man. When I went and met with Bum B, man, I'm gonna be real with you, man. I was I'm a I'm a I'm like you I'm such a UGK I'm a Pimp C fan mm-hmm. bro so to to really sit down with Bum B and I told him I was like man I really didn't even want to interview you because I don't want to mess up my fandom you man <laughs> I mean I want to make sure I keep the same perception I have of UGK right till I die Forever. you know what I'm saying yeah. <laughs> but he didn't let me down man this brother was more than he stayed with us extra extra long we walked the casino together we hung out at uh the, at the at the uh, fair together like we stayed together all day and i'll never forget that day bumby and we still i text him every now and then just check on him but one thing i can't say a genuine brother um like i said i'm a couple of years older than bun so at the end of the day i really watch their music and watch their move on the Mm -hmm. way to where I could digest it and dissect it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. From a clear standpoint of a, of a guy growing up and just watching them come on the scene. Cause you know, I go all the way back, you know, I can go, go I I go all the way back. I'm I'm, yeah, I go all the way back. Don't even play. You know, I I jump Hey, Frankie Beverly Mays and all that for that. Even we were looking at California and everything. Look at California. I was a Frankie Beverly Mays, uh, uh, Teddy Pendergrass, 
uh, you know about him? greatest inspiration. You know what I'm saying? I didn't yeah. even go. I didn't even go to TKO. I could have went there. You could have went there. I, but <laughs> I love music. You, man. you know <laughs> that TKO went crazy. Then turn like off the lights. I love TKO. You see what I'm saying, man? Listen, but oh, Bun, Bun oh, Devlin, oh, 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 he number one, huh? Yeah, man. Bun Damn. Man. I love that. Keep Bun B, man, I I fool with Bun B, man. Uh, number two. I'm gonna say, I probably can't think of these songs, but I'm these my peoples, and I'm gonna say uh, Andre Three Stack, like that Three Stacks, boy, that boy from the South. You hear him talking over there, Three mm-hmm. Stacks, Three Thigh Out, number You said we talking about lyricists or just uh-uh, about we like talking about any all genre. genre, any genre. Well, I mean, I'm gonna have to say Biggie. I like Biggie. I, I love Pac, but I love but I like Biggie because I like Sway. You and Mike Jones both. Yeah, the big guys. Yeah, Mike say he inspired him through, and when he broke it down, why it was such a explanation you had to respect it. Mm. You know what I mean? He made the big guys cool. Yeah, he made it to where big guys felt. But Heavy D did that <clears> before <throat> him, man. Heavy D did that for and Chubb Rock wasn't just no slouchy big digger. You know, he was. No, nah, Chubb Rock was a big player too. Yeah, so it was a, he. Them two there is who I think about. But I'm older, so I go back a little further real quick. But but Biggie said, "Heart throb never, black and ugly as ever, however." That nigga was going say, Gucci, Gucci down to Gucci the damn. Mm-hmm. Rings and watch filled with rocks, man. And my jam knocks in your Mitsubishi. Man. Girls pee pee when they see me. <laughs> Come on, man. What's the name ain't saying none of that? No, no. Heavy D. Yeah, they heavy D. 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 Cooling in my crib and I'm cold, Max. Turn up the radio. I'm in the mood for relaxing. For relaxing. Stop playing. Yeah, but they, Don't leave him out there like he, he can't go. He ain't say girl pee pee when they see me. <laughs> That's a different type of lyrics. But he, I believe Biggie, if he was here today, I'll tell you Heavy D was hard. Because Man. You got to stand Heavy D was hard. I'm not taking nothing from him. I'm not taking but nothing from just, him. Man, Biggie and them took it to a whole nother level. When you started coming into the 90s. Heavy D was light-skinned. Even from Jamaica, too. Yeah, he was Jamaican. <laughs> we got hard throb, never black and ugly as ever. <laughs> I can relate. You know man. What I, mean? I can so, relate. So that was man. I can relate to so, it. Let me ask you this, man. Um, if you if you wasn't around and somebody was doing a documentary and they spoke on you um, and <clears throat> who you are as a person, what would you want that documentary to say? I, I would I would hope that they would be honest and and say that he always wanted the best for everybody, and he would always. Give you what I man, I give you what I don't have, you know what I'm saying? People say the shirt off your back. Mm-hmm. I have literally stayed up. I have, I had a homeless friend, and God bless his soul, he did. Mo Inc. Wow, and uh, um, Mo Inc. yeah, RIP Mo, and I used to stay in my truck. I asked him where to live, but because the girl that I was with didn't want him at the house, I would stay out all night with him wow. so he could stay in my truck with me. Wow. Because I didn't want to see him out in the cold. Wow. You know, and I'm like, I'm out here. I ain't got to be out here. But for me to put my partner out and it's, Freezing outside, I couldn't do it. So I would hope that they would be honest, and everybody that I've come across, I try to lead them with something good. Even with, I have a friend that I talked to today. He was uh, overweight like I am, but he was about two hundred pounds bigger than me, maybe one fifty, two hundred, something like that. Something you know you. Way heavier than I am. And I begged and plead for him to, hey, get the surgery. You done waited too late to 
try to, you know, do any exercise and all that, you're too big, you can't move. Get the surgery. He kept I'm scared. Either way, you something finna happen. You know what I mean? He got the surgery. Now he probably <laughs> probably was what two sixty, two fifty, and he was over five. Wow. Mm. And I'm talking about last year. You know. But he tell me don't do it because it's a bunch of complications that come with this. Yeah. You know, so I'm doing it the way that I'm doing it. I'm losing the weight. I'm not losing as fast as he is or that he did. But I just, I say that to say I always try to be a blessing to, to people. Man. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I always try to, I'm more of a giver than trying to take from you. I'm going to give to you. I'm going to try to tell you something good. That's why I say a lot of people would be like, it's daddy. Here come daddy. Because he going to try to tell you what. <laughs> what's right. Yeah, what's right. Man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Got to ask you one last question. Okay. Um, I see that scar on your hand. Where you get that from? This. No, I think it's on your other hand. This? That's from yeah. dialysis. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know they do. They yeah. have a scar yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah, it, some, of, some people lump up a little. I seen. That's where they're from. I had them to take the lumps off, and she got it looking worse than with the lumps. I'm like, yeah. I might have the lumps. The yeah. lumps is what my partner had. He was taking them. No, they took it. They had them to take it off. I had two little knots. Yeah. And I had them to take the knots off, and then it was a big, long scar. She told me it would be a scar about this long, and I woke up, and it was this long. You've been through so much, man, and I thank God for letting us meet you. Mm -hmm. Your spirit is, man, you got a great spirit. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. I thank it. God for uh, meeting you and definitely want to, if you have any project, want to bring you back on the show at some point. If you're pushing a project, whatever you got, this 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 is what this outlet for. I appreciate it. Man, shout out to Bun B, though. He gave you that Bun B number one spot. Bun I B love it. Bun B number one to me, man. <laughs> but let me, let me, uh. Go ahead. Let me say my little pieces. I want to. Yeah, you had a shout out yeah, to people. Let me give a shout out right quick. Uh, shout out to, and if I forget you, don't try to call me, cussing me out. You should have been here. I asked everybody to come. Nobody didn't come with me. <laughs> so I ain't trying to hear it. But uh, I want to give a shout out to my mama, Sarah Smith, Michael Smith, uh, Rev. Sarah, Rev. Michael. Um, give a shout out to my sister who always hold me down, Jamaica. Uh, T.Y. Coomp Dog. Uh, <laughs> Come out, uh, R.I.P. Fat Al, man. I love you. I miss y'all, man. Uh, R.I.P. Black, R.I.P. Mo Inc., R.I.P. J.D. You know these are all my partners, man. I done lost in the last year or two, wow. man. Um, I done lost five, four, five of my friends. Wow. Back to back to back, these people that ran with me every day. Wow. My whole crew is dead. Wow. I don't know what that's about, but everybody that was running with me gone. Mm. Except the one dude that lost the weight. Yeah. It's just me and him left. Wow. Uh, polar Hits. Mm -hmm. R.I.P. the Polar Hit. No, no, no. R.I.P. not R.I.P. No. My, my bad. Polar, my bad. Oh, my God. That's the one lost the weight? No. Polar Hits. <laughs> that that's, was my management company. Oh, okay. You know Polar Hits? Your boy was up here talking about him. Mm. Uh, what his name? Uh, Rainwater. Oh, oh yeah. man. Shout Polar Hit. Um, shout out to Polar Hit Cone. Okay, we talking corn. Shout out to corn. And, uh, yeah, man, shout out to everybody in my whole team. If you love me, you know what I'm talking about. I love everybody, and I appreciate Boss Talk for having me. Man, how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? Hey, man, you can look me up on uh, Facebook. I'll, I'll be on Facebook. I'm my old nigga, man. Uh, I do be on Facebook. It's the one with the little cartoon thing on there. Um, I will talk if you talk to me. Uh, Instagram and all that. It's, everything is wide frame. I, I will talk if I see it. Man. Um, fool with me if you cool with me, man. Man, check it, man. Hey, yeah. man. Wide frame been in the building on Boss Talk 101. Whoa. We did that, man. Whoa. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss's talk. And we out.